Hey class, last video for this week. Uh, I know there's not as many videos, which is great. They're a little bit longer, I think. This one's gonna be kind of a longish one too as well, kind of similar to the first one. We're gonna look at, again, three other questions. Um, questions six, seven, and eight. These ones incorporate a lot more of our past work, whether it's energy or dynamics or kinematics. It starts adding in some other layers into our momentum. When we start talking about collisions and that kind of stuff. So. Um, there's going to be some different layers, especially 6 and 7, they'll kind of use energy, or 7 can use kinematics, 8 going to use kinematics and dynamics, uh, and, or possibly energy and dynamics, however you kind of want to do it. Um, 8, I will tell you, is kind of more like an AP question. So if you've done this whole practice worksheet, 8 as well as 10 is very much an AP actual one. Um, if you don't understand question 10 you want to come see me, come see me. It's not going to be on your assignment. But there will be a question like 8, um, which will be possibly kind of more like a bonus mark question, but I think you guys should be able to get eight not too, too bad. So let's kind of uh, start here with question six. Ooh, okay, so we gotta do two things here. Uh, put that down a little. Okay, now we can start. Question six, it says, in a Broadway performance, an 80 kilogram actor swings from a 3.7 long cable that is horizontal. So basically, you can imagine there's this cable, it is 3.75 meters, okay? Which means this person is also like the height of 3.75 meters. And you're like, well, how do you know that? Well, if this cable is all the way down to the ground, uh, it would be 3.75. It's a radius that just kind of keeps moving back and forth. And this will kind of be a little intro into our next topic of circular motion and radiuses and all that kind of stuff. But if I imagine this rope was all the way down, it would still have a radius um, of 3.75 meters, which means I put it all the way up. You are now 3.75 meters above. So we have a height of 3.75 meters. Okay. Da -da -da -da. At the bottom of his arc. So when this thing comes down, when it comes down, we have this person down here, okay, mass of 55 kilograms, okay? It says, in an elastic collision where these two collide and combine, okay, what is the maximum height they can actually get to here? So now I want to know the maximum height they can get to here. All right, let's understand what this person's velocity will be when they get to the bottom, which will give us our momentum, which then can give us our new velocity and our new height. Okay, so those are all our steps that we're going to do here. First height of 3.75 meters. It's going to swing down. Two ways you could do this. You could either do this kinema like kinematics way or you can do this energy way. Doesn't really matter. I, for some reason, prefer doing the energy way. And so I want to find out like what was my potential energy. Potential energy at the top is again just MGH, mass, gravity, height. And so I get 2,940, okay? Which means the kinetic energy at the bottom will also be 2,940. And the velocity will be a velocity of 8.57, 8.57 meters per second. So that's the velocity of this person alone coming down to the bottom, which means the momentum, 8.57 times 80 kilograms, is going to be 685.6. Okay, so there's the momentum initially. Okay, momentum, initial, 685.6. That also has to be my momentum final. Has to be 865.6. To find the new velocity, I'm just going to move this height for a second. I have to make sure that I add this new mass in there. Okay, so basically just taking the 685, 685, and I divide by the mass total to actually get our new velocity. So I, 80 plus 55, so I basically divide this by 135, and I get a velocity, I think of five, something, 5.08 meters per second. Cool, so that is the new velocity of these two, I don't know, trapezists or whatever gymnastics people they are. Um, that's the new velocity of them initially at the start. And so now they're gonna have like a new kinetic energy, which means they can get to a new potential height. So what is, our new kinetic energy, now that they have this, okay, we have a 5.08 times 5.08, okay, times mass, 135 by 2. They have kinetic energy now 
of 1741, okay? And then I'm going to convert this into potential energy. So I'm just going to divide by total mass, divide by gravity. So if I divide by this, 1741 divided by R135 divided by 9.8. They cannot get very high. They get to a height. A height of 1.32 meters. And that's it. Okay, so he started at 3.75, but now because they added mass, they can only get to a height of 1.32 meters on the way up. Okay, and so that's just using our energy. Or again, you could use kinematics here and just, again, know what your, your VI is zero, your acceleration is 9.8, your distance is 3.75, you would have got the exact same velocity here, which means you would have got the exact same momentum, which means you would have got still the velocity here. Now you would have had a velocity initial of 5.08. You know, gravity would be working against here, so negative 9.8, and you still would have got a height, a distance height of 1.32, okay? So both ways would have been exactly fine. All right, let's go to question seven. Question seven. Oh, it's being weird here. Okay, let's just get rid of this. Side class. Okay, so if I look here, it says ah, two blocks have a mass. Uh, one block has a mass of like two kilograms. So two kilograms. This one's four kilograms. They're released from rest at a height of five meters. So height is five meters. Okay, they're on a frictionless track when they go undergo a totally inelastic collision, which means again, they stick together. Determine the maximum height if the, which two they can go. So basically we need to know like, what is their momentum down here at the bottom? And to know that we need to know their velocity down here. Okay? Um, the nice thing is we kind of know like, it, does in a non, we don't have any air resistance here. It doesn't matter what mass you drop, it's going to get to the same velocity after the same height. We know that from way back in kinematics. Again, you can use kinematics here. You can use your energy, like your potential energy converted to your uh, kinetic energy. It doesn't matter. Uh, again, I used energy here. You can, it doesn't matter what you use. So here, potential energy at the top of this one is 98. Okay, so potential energy, 98. This potential energy, 196. When you convert that to kinetic energy and then you actually find your velocities, both velocities are the same of 9.9. .9. Okay, which I'm going to round to 10 to make it nice and easy. All right, so they both have velocities of 10 when they get down to the bottom. The momentums are not the same. We have a momentum of 20 here, a momentum of 40 here. Now, we have to make one of these negative. They're going in opposite directions, okay? Because when I add these, like, if I look at what is my net momentum beforehand, my net momentum, like, initially, they're not going in the same direction, which means I can't add these. I have to subtract them. It doesn't matter which one you take as negative. I'm going to take the small one as negative just so I get a positive value thing, but I can make this one negative and have a negative momentum. That, that's fine. It just means that it's going left or it's going right. In this instance, because I've chosen this one, okay, I'm going to say that it's going left, which is negative, like going west is negative, so I'm gonna make this negative 40. What is my net momentum? I have 20, I have negative 40. My net momentum is negative 20, which means like at the end, my momentum final is still gonna be negative 20, okay, which means it's just gonna be going left. All right, all right, hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now that I have my momentum final at the end, I can find what's the velocity of these two things when they come together. Well, I'm gonna divide by six because that's my mass total in this. And I get a velocity of 3.3 meters per second. Okay, and then it's gonna ask, what is my new height? Again, take this kinetic energy or use kinet like kinematics to figure out like what height they're gonna get to. There's a mass of six now because they're together. You will get to a height 0 0.57 meters high. And so again, just take this velocity, like turn that into kinetic energy, 
and then convert that to potential energy, like the height, or again, you use your kinematics. That 3.33 would be an initial velocity. You know that gravity is negative 9.8 as an acceleration. If you're trying to find a distance, your VF would be zero because once you get to a maximum height, your VF is zero. Either way, we've done a lot of those types of questions. So, but you get to a height of 0 0.57. So hopefully that question is not too I, I really just want to make sure that you guys know when, because it's, it's caught a couple of people before. When things are going opposite directions, one of them has to be negative, okay? All right, question eight, our tough one, but our last question. Oh man, it's long. I can't even fit it all in the thing here. Oh, right. it's, it's, I know the writing gets small, and I know that basically it's really hard to see anything here. I'm going to basically just you make this really big after we talk about this, okay? So it says a small block of like mass of one. So basically, I have a mass of one. Okay, it's so at the top of a curved ramp shown below. The block slides down the ramp, and it's moving at 3.5, 3.5 meters when it collides over here. So it's gone down the whole ramp. It has a velocity of 3.5. Like this one has a velocity of 3.5 when it gets to the bottom. Okay, this has a mass of 1.5. The larger block now moves to the right at a speed of two meters per second. So after it gets hit, it has a speed of two meters per second, immediately after the collision, okay? At the start of it, it was at rest. After, it's at two meters per second. It says, express your answers to the following questions. Okay, this is where I'm gonna finally make it bigger and zoom in. All right. It says, determine the height of the ramp in which the block was released. So basically, all I need to know is, like, again, I have a velocity of 3.5, 3.5, uh, what was my height? Like, what did it start off with? Again, convert that to kinetic energy and potential energy, or you can use kinematics. That's your V final, your V velocity initial was zero. Either one, um, I'm going to screw, again, convert that to potential energy, so kinetic energy. But I had a height, you would have had a height of 0.6. Two to five meters. So that's A. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, we've done that one before. Determine the speed of the small block after the collision. So now we actually need to do our like constant momentum. We have to do this formula here: m1, v1, m2, v2, one. So what was my momentum of this block? Momentum one um, was sorry, 3.5. Uh, 3.5 times one. So it had a mass of one, velocity 3.5, so I get a momentum of 3.5. Okay, momentum two is zero. So momentum initial for both was 3.5, which means momentum final also has to be 3.5. Okay, if you just want to plug it into this formula, absolutely, it works beautiful, okay, it will work just fine. Um, I'm just kind of going through the, again, the understanding side of this. When I get this block here, okay, this block, which I'm going to use black for, or not. Uh -huh. Woo, it's been a long little video. Um, this it has a mass of 1.5, velocity of 2. So this object, object 2, will have a momentum of 3, which means that my original block still has to have momentum, okay? If my momentum final is 3.5, and this block has a momentum of three, that means the original block still has to have some momentum. The original block, momentum one final has to be 0 0.5. Okay, so it says determine the speed. If I had a momentum of 0 0.5, I can divide by one because that's the mass. The velocity would be 0 0.5 meters per second. All right, so here determine the speed of the block, 0 0.5 meters per second. All right, okay, not too, too bad so far. Let's kind of erase this. It says now, see, the larger block starts sliding a distance. So this big block we know has a velocity of two, slides a distance of d. It doesn't give a number. If it doesn't give a number, just put one. It's gonna move a distance of one, okay, one d. So it moves a 
It moves one meter. Distance equals one you come to the office, meter. Mr. Roberts, to the office, please. I determine the value of the coefficient of kinetic friction. Basically, just figure out the kinetic friction, the coefficient of friction between this. As it had a velocity of two, it came to a stop. Its V final was zero after one meter. Okay, well, how do I figure that out? I have to know what was the deceleration. Because if you remember when we go back from back all the way to dynamics, dynamics the way that I connected dy dynamics and um, kinematics was always by acceleration. Okay, that acceleration plays into both really well. So I need to know the deceleration here. Okay, and so how do I do that? Well, I have a VF, I, sorry, I have a VI of two, I have a VF of zero, I have a distance, and so I can figure out that actual um, acceleration. Okay, so with my VF squared, VI squared, 2AD. Okay, so let's actually figure that out. Let's put that into our formula here. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So basically, I have 0, 2 squared plus 2. My A, I don't know. And the distance is 1. So I'm going to get negative 4 equals I, 4 and then move it over. Um, 2A. I don't need to, if, when the distance is 1, again, I don't need to use it because I'll just divide by 1. So divide by 2. Divide by 2. My acceleration is negative 2 meters per second squared. All right, I know my acceleration. There's my little kinematics part of this. I need to now take this to the dynamics part. If I know that the only thing that's slowing this down is friction, when I look at my F equals mass times acceleration, well, this force, what's the force? That's, that's the force of friction. That's all the force that's acting on this thing, okay? So I have a mass of 1.5, so I can kind of figure out what my actual force friction is. I have mass of 1.5, times negative two. I know that my force, force of friction is gonna be three. Three newtons. All right, now that I have the force friction of three newtons, so I force friction equals three newtons. It's asking for the coefficient. Again, formula for that. Okay, force of friction equals mu times force normal. How do I get force normal? It's on a flat surface, so force normal is exactly the same as force gravity. 1.5 times 9.8 gives me 14, ah, 14.7. Okay, and this is three, which means to get my answer, to get mu, it is three over 14.7, which gives me the answer. Mu equals 0 0.2, 0 0.2, I don't know that over here. Mu equals 0 0.2. That was a lot of work to get mu out. It's not crazy hard, but I know the steps can be hopefully like a little daunting. But we've done this type of stuff before. So hopefully it still kind of comes back a little bit. Okay? Get that acceleration. Once you get that acceleration, as long as there's no other force is acting, which is not, which is nice, that force is going to be force friction. Fine force normal. Get your mu. There's mu. All right, let's erase this. And go to the last one, B. Indicate whether this collision between the two boxes is elastic or inelastic. All right. And all right, so let's do that. What's my kinetic energy initial? Kinetic energy initial. Only one block was moving, so let's just find that. It was 3.5. It had a velocity of 3.5 and a mass of 1. So when I do that, my kinetic energy beforehand is 6.125. 6.125. All right, I need to know my kinetic energy final of the both objects. So I'm going to put object one and object two. Okay, object two is going to be the bottom one. Object one is going to be the one that's still moving. Now remember, we found that this was still moving at 0 0.5. So when I go 0.5 times 0.5 again, and then mass of one times one, and then divided by two. I get kinetic energy of very small, 0.125. Okay, not very big. Let's find my kinetic energy of this object now, though. Okay, which was 3. So 3 times 3 times 1.5. It has a mass of 1.5 divided by 2. You can see I get kinetic energy of 6.75. When I add those together, 
My kinetic energy final is 6.87, which you can see is not the same as it was before. Somehow we have more kinetic energy put into the system. I don't know what happened when these two hit each other, but technically this is an elastic collision because I, I got more energy out of it. Okay, so usually when two things hit each other and then glance off, it's almost always elastic. But when we have to justify our answer, when we find the kinetic energy before and after, you can see that here we have way more kinetic, not way more, but we have for sure more energy hereafter, which means that this is going to be an elastic, any, sorry, inelastic, inelastic collision. All right, that's enough of me talking. Hopefully this week goes well for you guys. If you have any questions, I mean, I, have no, I know we have no lab, so it's a little harder to kind of talk to each other, but um, if you have any questions at all, we can video chat, we can do all of that stuff to try and make sure that this makes sense, okay? All right, class, thanks so much. Hope that you guys are doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Um, I shall talk to you soon. I have to come over here to my mouse. All right, have a good day.